texture because maybe you know you press six and you already have your file inside of your source images folder it's really easy if I click on this geometry and I click on this icon here it says attribute editor a shortcut for it is command a or sometimes it's control a it's going to take me to this very long list of tabs okay what I'm looking for is the tab that says if you put in 3D paint textures. Schmo Fong. Okay. I'm looking for the tab that says Schmo Fong. No, just paste it there. So press Command A until you get into your attribute editor, and we're going to go to Schmo Fong. Now, you can see right here where it says color. Right? Right here where it says color, I'm going to click on that little tab right there. And I'm going to locate the image. So I'll click on that little manila folder. It should take me directly to my source images folder if I set my project properly. And then I'll press open. And there you go. Okay. So now when you press six, there it is. Okay, so. When I open source images, all that there is. Are you on the documents folder or are you in your? Yeah, okay. So now I'm going to click on this. And at frame one, I'll press S to set a key. I'll go to the position where, my, where the ball hits the floor. And then I'll look at my reference image. So my reference image is showing me that the ball is rotating forward. And it's also rotating to the point where I can't see that line. So it's kind of like rotating forward in the direction that it's going. And it's rotating forward in the direction towards me. So in, my, in Maya... Let me zoom in. All right. And I'll move this video over here for reference. I'll click on that line here. It's rotating forward and it's kind of doing that thing here, like this. Now, again, our white line is going to be the yellow and the green line where they meet so I'll press S and now if I zoom out and scrub through you can see that the ball is rotating alright so you see the ball is rotating okay now I'll go to the next position along this so my reference are the black lines in this case so now I'll go to Maya and go to the top of the arc and it kinda rotates that way and then like that All right, so something like that and I'll press S And then the next position along this arc, it continues to rotate like that. And I'll go to Maya and then scrub through. And I'll rotate that ball this way. And then I'll rotate it. Whoa. Kind of flipped. Let's see. Goes here. And it should move like this. If 
press S, and I think it goes like that a little bit. So I got a weird rotation there. So I'll press Z to undo. Alright. I like it here. And then on the way down, it should rotate that way. And I'll press S. You see? And then I'll go to my next position. Kind of goes forward, top of the arc. Goes, let's see, like that, and forward. All right, so see that it's doing something weird right at that position. Alright. Move it forward like this. And I'll move it that way. And I'll press S. So this white line for me is the um, line is the that yellow and green line that goes all the way around uh, to the other side of that ball. So, like that. Now, if we were using, let's say, another ball, uh, let's say we had this sphere and It'd be much easier for us to uh, change the colors on this ball by simply assigning um, a new material to this ball, say something like a blend, and changing the entire ball to say black. And then we could select the faces and then assign a new material, let's say like another blend, and then make those faces white. And it'd be much easier for us to visually see that line as it relates to the position um, on here. But since our ball is like a beach ball, we have to um, use the, the line that is in between the blue and green and the line that is in between the red and yellow. So as I'm looking at the reference video and I'm trying to follow this angle of the white line, I'm using the line that separates the blue and green and the red and yellow. All right. So Let's go back to our video and go back into Maya. I was at frame, let's see, frame 28 when we left off. Goes up in the air at frame 34. That's that position. When it hits the floor at frame 40, kind of rotates forward like that and it does that kind of angle maybe I'll rotate it this way a little more now I'll go to the next position
and then go back into Maya. Screw up forward until it's at the top of the arc. I'll move this guy up that way. And I'll rotate it to the left. Again, the white line that's in my reference video is the line that separates the blue from the red and the green from the white. So I'm just trying to get the same angle. I'll press S. And then I'll look at my reference video. And I'll scrub along it to the next position where the ball hits the floor and that should be at frame 62 so it looks like it rotates forward go back into Maya let me see my channel box editor I'll go here where it hits the floor I'll rotate this ball that way I'll rotate it down like so and I'll rotate it up alright so it does this really weird thing sometimes like it jumps I'll do that I'll press S I'll do that position there press S again because I know it rig is a little weird kinda glitches out every so often <laughs> And I'll press S, just kind of continue to keep this rig accountable to doing what I want it to do. And I think the angle here between the red and the blue, I think that angle looks very similar to the one in my reference video. So now I'll scrub forward. I'll click on that I'll go to my next key position which is at frame 56 I rotate it that way I move it back in that direction and then I'm gonna rotate it this way I rotate it forward I'll press S. So let's see what I have so far. Alright. Now again the ease in and the ease outs, I'm going to change those positions along the um, in the graph editor when we polish the videos. So a few more bounces that we can do um, some other time, but as for now, this is how you get all of the rotations um, for your bouncing ball project.